Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Story Mode. How are you liking it so far? I mean, for people who've like not seen the story already, I mean, who don't, people who are new to it. And I know I already kind of told you that like, yeah, these early things are kind of like boring. This is the bad first season and all, but I'm curious, like for a, someone experiencing it for the first time, is it grabbing you so far? Things you like, don't like? I'm just genuinely curious. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, Owen, give me more work. Owen would like to speak with you regarding the Sultana's invitation. Right, not, not time for work, time for play or banquet, which falls somewhere in between. By the 12, German, for an adventurer to receive a personal invitation from her grace is unprecedented. Seats at these banquets are offered only to the most distinguished individuals. You'll be dining with some of the most influential people in Uldah. There are, of course, certain protocols that must be observed, but I am no authority on them. Fear not, however, Mistress Mamodi has long been responsible for familiarizing foreign guests with our customs. Pray return to the quicksand and speak with her. She'll tell you all you need to know. Fantastic. Always happy to visit Mamodi. Mamodi, I've been invited to a banquet. Help. Welcome back, Derman, and congratulations on your invite to the big soiree. To be honest, I never imagined I'd be explaining these procedures to you. It's usually only foreign dignitaries who get to wear me, uh, get to hear me prattle on and on about royal traditions. Any road, I know you're a busy man, so I'll keep it short and sweet. You, you're in my shot, guy. <laughs> keep your jumps off. Ca Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Bleep. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what are you doing? Whatever, you're just going to be an additive element today, I guess. <laughs> Rude. In accordance with ancient custom, all guests to this banquet are required to wear a pair of ceremonial earrings, made specially for the occasion. They're meant to symbolize... Actually, forget about that. This was meant to be the short version. <clears throat> Being of a design unique to the occasion, the earrings serve as a security measure. The Sultan's Warren won't let you near the hall without him. Your set should be ready and waiting for you at the Goldsmith's Guild. And Mistress Serendipity is expecting you, so you'll want to head down there now. Once you've got him, bring him back here and we'll continue. All right. Earring fetching. Go! And welcome, everyone, to the Goldsmith's Guild. That's right. Guilds aren't just for, like, fighty-type jobs. There's also crafting jobs and gathering jobs, and goldsmithing is one of them. So if you're a goldsmith, you will be coming here and dealing a great deal with Miss Serendipity here. Greetings. Is there something I can help you with? Ah, Derman, your earrings are right here. I crafted them myself. I'll have you know. I think you'll be very pleased. In case Mistress Momodi didn't warn you, the box is locked and I am not permitted to give you the key. It's a final safeguard, you see. Only designated individuals are authorized to distribute the earrings to guests. In this instance, the person in question is none other than Mistress Momodi, so you'll need to ask her to open the box on your behalf. Pardon the inconvenience, but the Sultan's sworn take her grace's safety very seriously. That's reasonable. All right, we're off. I have a new shield, by the way, do you see? I did my job quest. Like all good <laughs> players do, I guess. Uh, sorry, I hadn't really figured out that sentence. Before I started it, that happens on this channel sometimes. To Mamodi! Boy, this... Mamodi is like the eye of the hurricane in this town. It's like everything runs through her. Like the mover and shaker. Singular. Picked up your earrings yet, Dermon? I feel like you're the person who actually runs this town. That's the impression I'm getting. A tiny box carved from a single piece of rosewood. Let me just... Well now, looks like the guildmaster outdid herself with this pair. You best take good care of these earrings. If they fall into the wrong hands, gods only know what might happen. Now then, I hope you're feeling sociable, Dermon, because you're about to hobnob with Uldah's elite. Let me know when you're ready to head to the banquet. Hmm. Oh, and there's our earrings. Voice of the just. Cool. Hmm. I feel like I should... Armor feels a little bit too... Well, not casual, but not formal either. Let me... Let me see what I've got. Hmm. Not the most impressive, I'll grant you. It is basically just my starting gear. <laughs> with a few little accessories. The feather is a nice touch, though, I think. Also the sword, which kind of almost matches my... Scarf? Whatever it is. This is going to have to do. Sorry, I'm too young. I haven't bought my first suit yet. This will have to do. I should actually probably put the earring in too, huh? That's probably important. Well, maybe maybe I can just put it in before I arrive. Momodi wants to see you off to the banquet. 
This is it, Dermon. Your big debut in Uldan High Society. The banquet's being held in the Fragrant Chamber. Head over to the Royal Promenade and Bartholomew will show you in. Oh, be sure to put on your earrings first or he'll send you packing. Great. Well, I reckon that's everything. Try not to let all the pomp and ceremony get to you. Just be yourself. You'll be fine. Well, thank you. Wish me luck. All right. I'm going to go put in my earring and then off to the banquet. And here we are in the Chamber of Rule on our way toward what I believe is the correct area. Ah, yes, here we go. The Royal Promenade. Where the higher-ups do things. Let me in, I have an earring invitation. A banquet hosted by Her Grace the Sultana is due to begin shortly. Attendance is by invitation only. Please make way for arriving guests. I beg your pardon. I'm a guest who's arrived. We're honored to receive you, my lord. Please proceed inside. I will. Watch out, Banquet, here comes Dermon. Ah, Papa Sean, hello. All hail the Sultana. Your Grace. Raubon. I do love that. By right of the Royal House of Ul, I, Nonimo, 17th of my line, have summoned you here. We are graced this day by the presence of a hero to Ulda, and dear friend to the crown. Honored guests, I give you our champion! And with that, I bid you enjoy the feast. I want someone to carry me around on their arm. Not to spoil your appetite, but Uda is hardly so bountiful as this meal would have you believe. While we gorge ourselves, children starve in the streets. Nor can her grace do aught to help them. She is thwarted at every turn by those on the syndicate who derive their wealth from the workers' poverty. Beneath her mask of stately serenity, she is aghast at the plight of her subjects. But there will be no hope for the masses until the crown is restored to power. So is this like a quest, or...? I am truly grateful for all you have done for Ulda. But there is so much more to do. I can deliver pretzels. That light. What is it? Oh. <laughs> I carry this around, I guess. So bright. Almost like... By the Twelve. Tell me true. Have you been troubled by strange dreams of late? Visions of the crystal? Mayhap you... put them down to an excess of ether? Yes, you are like they were. Allow me to explain. Before you came to Eorzea, there were others like you who fought the primals. Though they were not of this land, when the Galian Empire threatened the realm, they helped bring together the three grand companies. And they stood with us at Cartano, that fateful day five years ago, the day we lost them. None who survived have forgotten the hero's sacrifice, nor would any man deny they fought alongside us. But the names of these heroes come not to our lips. The once familiar pages of their story are now blank to us. And in our mind's eye, their faces are not but silhouettes amid a blinding glare. It is for this reason that we have come to call them the Warriors of Light. When I look at you, I cannot help but think of them, and of what you might achieve. You must protect that crystal at all costs. It is a gift from Hydaelyn, mother of all, and one she gave to you for a reason. 
Yours is no ordinary tale. If I am right, the fate of the realm may yet hang upon your deeds. No pressure, man. I just came here for dinner. Only heroes and martyrs are fit to bear such a burden. Let us pray you are the former. We're seeing things again. belongs to the bold. Show those Imperial whore sons what we're made of! The left flank buckles. Divert the Barracudas. Bid them hold that position, though it cost them their lives. The Yellow Serpents are in need of succor. Pray, send the White Wolves to their aid. The adventurers risk life and limb for our cause. We must not fail them. Artemis? No, it is nothing. Oh, oh, bloody hells! The barrier won't go down so easily! Eyes forward! We are being watched. Raging Bull, calling Bloodthorn. Bloodthorn, respond! Respond, damn you! Raging bull. What news? We're surrounded by a blaze. There is no way out. God preserve what is that thing? What's going on? Speak to me. God damn it! We cannot hold much longer. Mad snake! Mad snake! Answer me! I get it. To the seventh hell! What of the Barracudas? Can they not be reached? Sorry, Admiral. Shell's not working. What of our own? I cannot say, my lady. That monstrosity appears to be disrupting our communications. We must keep trying. Call till they respond. Yes, my lady. Admiral, General, we can do no more. We must give the order to withdraw. I will not forsake Louis Swan. General, please. Victory may belong to the bold, but there will be no victor this day. You know this to be true. Let us not sacrifice lives in vain. The adventurers fight bravely, but to no avail. Let them withdraw, and let us be the ones to stand with Louis Soi.
Belay previous orders. All Maelstrom units are commanded to fall back, effective immediately. Give the foreign levy priority. Let the main host cover their retreat and bring up the rear. Damn it! Relay the order. All flames are to withdraw. I don't care if our link cells are useless. You still have a working pair of legs, don't you? Well, use them, you bloody halfwit! The outcome of this battle was long since decided. Better to retreat now than risk a massacre. This dark, stifling presence. Who or what? to take our place beside Archon Luiswa. To your positions. Kazbamul, so ginin moise don't zool. Logalo, asawad deken bed mubu. In the right way, kiss Kartoga hearts one adorns. Seize me again, feast doon the only lamb rides at I dawn. It occurs to me I probably should have read those lines aloud. <laughs> I'll do that in the future. How are you feeling, Dermon? I'm so tiny on the bed. They said you fainted in the middle of one of the general stories. I had to have you carried back to the hourglass. I reckon you made quite an impression on your fellow guests, though probably not the sort you intended. You sure you're getting enough rest, Dermon? The life of an adventurer can be pretty taxing. Any road, I'm glad to see you're back to normal. No offense, but looking after you was getting a bit tiresome. Oh, before I forget, the General left a message for you, said that when you're feeling up to it, you should come and see him in the Hall of Flames. Probably wants to finish the story he was telling you when you fell asleep. All right. It's really interesting watching that little scene and set of events there, because, like, that is the sort of sequence that later expansions are going to pull off so much better. Like, it, it... Compared to what they do later, that falls quite flat. In a lot of ways, and on a lot of fronts. It's an important scene and moment and story bit, but, like... Yeah, it, it, uh, <laughs> seeing that sort of stuff, hey, rain, seeing that sort of stuff, like, uh, really, for me, reminds me of just, like, man, this game has come a ways with its, uh, dialogue, vocal performances, scene direction, everything. Lots to look forward to, but lots to get through first. Okay, I need to get to the, uh, I went the wrong way. Here we go. This is this is more like it. So to the Hall of Flames, the headquarters of the flames. I didn't have to explain that. Uh, Robon, hello. Good to see you again. Sorry for fainting. I've been waiting for you, Dermon. I trust you are fully recovered. Good, because there's much work to be done. Work that I would have you do. Ah, finally a job. Who needs snacks? Listen well, Dermon. This will take some time to explain. Okay, I'm all ears. I'll not faint this time, I promise. Rabon wins to entrust you with a task of utmost import.
I've prepared these letters for my counterparts in the Aeorzean Alliance. Five years ago, we looked on, powerless, as our brothers and sisters were taken from us at Cartano. First by the Garleans, then by the thrice-damned primal called forth by their treachery. Not a day goes by that I do not think of my fallen comrades. And of the Warriors of Light, of whom no trace remained. The tragedies of the Calamity are not so easily forgotten, nor should they be. In remembering all we've lost, we're reminded of what we still have. And so I mean to mark the fifth anniversary of the Battle of Cartano with a memorial service honoring the Fallen. It is my hope that my counterparts in the Alliance will agree to do the same. And I would have you bear my words to them as my personal envoy. Why you? Because your deeds mark you out as the nearest thing I have to a Warrior of Light. I can think of none more worthy of the role. The question is, will you accept it? I'm your... tiny hero. Then it's agreed. You will journey to Gridania and Limsa Laminsa as my official representative. Now, that's a great many malms to travel, but I've neither the time nor the patience to wait around while you do it on foot. I hereby grant you permission to use the airship routes connecting the three city-states. This pass serves as proof of your privilege. Gone are the days when airship travel was available to all. The ever-present threat of Imperial attack has forced us to impose drastic restrictions out of concern for public safety. These passes are only granted when circumstance demands it, as in this case. Though there were others who insisted you be granted one regardless. Aye, Dermon. I'm not alone in seeing it. Your potential is plain. But I've said enough. In the name of the Sultana, I bid you go forth. See for yourself the wonders of the realm for which the Warriors of Light risked all. Rise to your calling and fulfill your promise. And should your path be barred by man or beast, strike fast and true, for victory belongs to the bold. Now go, Dermon, and heed the Crystal's guidance should you ever lose your way. Yes, sir. Quite the task. Our uh, Uldah-based story is now starting to converge with all the other, like, starting city stories into the main story quest of A Realm Reborn. Exciting times. I need to... Mamodi, right. Hey, Mamodi, guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what? I have an airship pass. I can ride airships. Ah, back from your meeting with Raban, are you? What did the big man have to say? Is that a fact? Personal envoy of the Flame General himself. So you'll be bearing the great man's words to the leaders of the Alliance, will you? And by airship. Bucker me, that's an honor and a half, that is. But I can't think of anyone who deserves it more. I'm proud of you, Dermon. I truly am. Now, I dare say Raban told you this, but not many people get to go on airships these days. In fact, most people go to their graves having never once seen Eorzea from above. Poor buggers shuffle off to meet Thal having never known the blues of Limsa Laminsa's shimmering seas, or the myriad greens of leafy Gridania. But not you, Dermon. You'll see those sights and more, and everywhere you go, you'll find fascinating folk with fascinating tales to tell. The people you meet, the places you go, savor these experiences. For they are priceless, all. Saying that, it'd be remiss of me if I didn't remind you to be careful out there. Ulda ain't the only place beset by troubles, as you'll discover when you visit Limsa and Gridania. Truth be told, that might well be exactly what the General wants you to realize. I think he knows what kind of man you are, Dermon. And what kind's that, you ask? Why, the kind that can't resist sticking his nose in other people's business, of course. And don't you ever go changing. Safe travels, Dermon. I'll see you when you get back. Oh, hooray. Now, I know it sounds like this is probably going to be a huge deal for getting around places quickly. It isn't. <laughs> Airships are something that you, as a player, are likely to actually rarely use. Uh, 
They're, I think they were much more useful in 1.0. They could be very handy back in Final Fantasy XI, the uh, predecessor to this MMO here. Uh, where is the airship landing from here? I think I can just warp there. I'm going to just warp there. But yeah, uh, you will find that generally Etherite teleporting and chocobos or other mounts will do most of... Well, it'll handle most of your travel needs for you, but uh, airship riding is pretty fun. So let's ride an airship. Greetings, sir. This is the reservation counter for passengers traveling to Limsa Lominsa. If I'm not mistaken, you're the Flame General's envoy, Dermin Durami, yes? Highwind Skyways is at your service. Will you be flying with us today? Yes, I will. Let's go. Oh, here we are. The gangplank and our ride. Let's board. Attention all passengers, the airship bound for Limsa Lominsa is about to depart. Please make your way to the boarding gate. And we're off on an adventure. <laughs> when first we met beneath the Sultan Tree, I sensed there was something unusual about him. I wonder if they'll feel the same. Godspeed, Dermon! Godspeed! If I'm right, they'll be singing your praises from here to the Far Reach before long. May you always walk in the light of the crystal. A new chapter of our adventure begins. Twice now, it has eluded the Empire's grasp. For all the destruction it wrought, even Meteor, the Great Sin, failed to yield us control over it. And for this failure, the realm has sunk deeper into depravity. It is twisted beyond all reckoning, rotten nigh to the core. Yet, it must be saved. 
Only Garlean rule can bring order to Eorzea. It falls to us to deliver the misguided masses from their ignorance. We are of one mind, Lord Van Balza. Hey, is the Legatus really planning to take another tilt at Eorzea? Hey, what hole have you been hiding in? We're in the midst of preparing for a new campaign, and a huge one at that. But I thought the Emperor had given up the Western lands for lost after Cartano. What could the Legatus possibly hope to gain by acting alone? I sense you harbor certain doubts over the wisdom of the Legatus's plan. Uh, my, my lord! Please, call me Nero. Tell me, where were you born? Otha, my lord. Alamigo, my lord. Ah, codename Hummingway, I presume? I... I don't know what you... Silence. Your denials will not change your fate. I assure you, Frumentarium sees all. Clean up this mess, and do not miss any, or I shall be most displeased. At, at, at once, my lord. Garland, soon you will be made to know the true power of Magitek. Ah, we're arriving! Welcome to Limsolomensa, everyone. One of the other starting towns. More of a seaport-themed place. Alright, let me out. Ah, you must be the envoy from Ulda. Welcome to Limsolomensa, sir. Admiral Blufusven awaits your arrival. Thank you. I've had practice with that name before. <laughs> Trust me, I didn't just wing it. You are the Uldan Envoy. Welcome to Limsolomensa. The Admiral's been looking forward to your arrival. Please proceed to the Crow's Lift at your earliest convenience. It'll take you to Bulwark Hall. Once there, pray speak with Xanthale. He will be pleased to show you into the Admiral's command room on the bridge. I'd even call it a bridge. All right, let's take the lift to Bulwark Hall. Thank you. Ah, let's air, let's give you a look at the place. By the way, um, of the three starting cities, at least on this server, and I think on most, Limsolomensa is easily the one where most people populate and, like, hang out. It is, like, not everyone's even loading in right now. It's very busy around here. And one of the little touches that I really love is that when you go to a place where lots of player characters are hanging around, they sort of, like, add this crowd noise to the audio, and it gets, like, louder and more crowded sounding the more people there are. It's such a cool little touch. It makes places where a lot of, like, players are hanging out feel busy. Such a nice touch. 
I, I guess we should actually go ahead and attune to this. I haven't attuned to anything outside of the old uh, area. Let's save ourselves a little bit of work, huh? There we are. But yeah, this is Limsa Liminsa. It is a nice town. Especially if you like pirates. They're way into the pirate theme out here. Anyway, let's go talk with their leader. Greetings, sir, and welcome to our fair city. If you'd permit me to examine the seal on the missive you carry. Here we go. A letter addressed to Lamincent Admiral Merlwib uh, Blufisfen. Blufisfen, I think. It's still hard to say. <laughs> yes, everything seems to be in order. My apologies, we cannot afford to be complacent. You understand. Please, step this way. Enter. So the silver-tongued merchant send an adventurer to speak for them. It appears the Uldans place great faith in you. This way. I bid you welcome. I am Melvi Blufisvin, Admiral of Limso Lominsa, and Commander of the Maelstrom. Now, what news from Thanalan? Hmm. A memorial service to honor the fallen. Seven hells. Has it been five years? I wish I could imitate the, like, cool gravel she has to her voice. She, she's one of the, uh, original, like, Realm Reborn vo uh, Realm Reborn vo <laughs> I can't talk today. Realm Reborn voice actors, uh, that, uh, whose voice, like, I like the most, whose, uh, original casting fit quite well. Her new voice is also good, and pretty similar, honestly, but good voice. Five years since the Garlean Empire sought to wrest Eorzea from our grasp. It was in answer to the Imperial threat that the city-states formed the Grand Companies and forged the Eorzean Alliance anew. But Garlemald was not content to wage uh, to wager all on a simple contest of martial might. They had other plans. The Meteor Project. Legatus Nail von Darnus, Hells Take Him, intended to cleanse our realm by snatching the lesser moon Dalamud from the heavens and casting it down upon our heads. Desperate to prevent this lunatic scheme, we marched our forces to the Cartano Flats and there met the Seventh Imperial Legion in battle. Never have I seen a fight like the Battle of Cartano, and I have seen full many. But though we gave no quarter, spared not one ounce of effort, we could not prevent what followed. From inside the shell of Dalamud came a winged nightmare, a dragon the size of a bloody city. It was the Elder Primal Bahamut, bent on making an eighth hell of Eorzea. In the space of a breath, the legions of the Empire were set aflame, while our own armies fared little better. It was as if the whole world was burning. Words cannot well describe the scene. And yet, by some miracle, a few among us were spared. Even as I steeled myself for death, a blinding white light enveloped me, robbing me of my senses. When I regained them, the dragon was gone, and the still smoldering land was warped beyond all knowing. Were Archon Louis Soi still with us, or were he still with us, he would doubtless shed some light on these unfathomable happenings. Alas, he is not, and I fear we will want for his wisdom in the days to come. For while our nations struggle to recover from the devastation, the beastmen call forth their damned primals to torment us anew. Unless we put aside our differences and rebuild now, our foes will catch us unprepared. And I speak not only of the Beastmen. Do not imagine that the Empire has forsaken its claim on Eorzea. The Imperials crowd our borders, waiting to strike. Damn it all, we need champions to replace those we lost. But such thoughts are worse than worthless. Time is short, and none will save us save ourselves. It is the duty of every soul who survived the Calamity to work together for the good of Eorzea and this memorial service may be the very thing to unite us. Aye, Raban has the right of it. 
I accept his proposal. Your duty is done here, adventurer. I will see to it that the Flame General receives my reply. You travel next to Gridania, yes? Pray give my regards to Elder Seatseer. Oh, and tell her the wolf has been sniffing around the stables. A private jest, and one in poor taste, but I would have you tell it all the same. Fare you well, Dermon. May the Navigator guide you on your journey. I like her. And we're kicked out of the room. Okay, that's fair enough. We should probably go ahead and call it today. We will go visit Gridania uh, next time. And by the way, so I was critical somewhat of the uh, scene we saw earlier and of a lot of the stuff we're seeing story-wise and scene-wise and voice-wise and everything. I should, like, <laughs> I do want to give the folks who made this a good deal of credit, though. The fact that this is an MMO remade from the ground up. And what's more, remade from the ground up while still supporting the 1.0 version with updates and patches and fixes, and also the remake was done in like a little less than a year and a half, which for MMO development is bonkers. That is an unheard of fast schedule. And so like, yes, they are like, this is not the best that that, that that team is able to do. The expansions have proven that handily, but uh, this is still an incredible success of an effort for what they had to do at like, given they managed to turn this game's uh, entire reputation around by attempting just an unheard of thing is wild, and I, they have my full respect. <laughs> I cannot imagine how stressful that would have been. Anyway, let's wrap it up. I will see you all next time when we go visit Gridania, another cool place. Take care, everyone, and goodbye. <laughs>